In addition to referencing arrays of data in our database, we also want to be able to reference individual objects. This can be accomplished using the dollar Firebase object service provided by the Angular Fire library. It's very similar to the dollar Firebase array service, so I'll expedite the explanation. I'm going to create a very simple index.html file that contains an input element and three buttons to save, remove, and bind our object. In our app.js file, we'll see that our controller depends on the dollar scope and dollar Firebase object services. And just like the dollar Firebase array service, we need to get a reference to our Firebase database, and then we'll define an activate function where we assign a reference to a particular object in our database, in this case, a top tier child called object, to our scope's obj variable. Unlike with dollar Firebase array, however, it won't automatically create an object for us. The object needs to exist already when we reference it. With this reference, we're now ready to implement those methods in our controller, the bind, remove, and save obj methods. And they are very similar to the dollar Firebase array methods. However, instead of passing in the object, they are simply a method of the Firebase object itself. And one in particular that's very interesting is that dollar bind to method. It essentially binds the object in our database to the object in our application. Let's go to our browser to see exactly what that implies. The first thing we need to do is create an object in our database. So I'll click on add child and then type in the name as object and the value is a string that just says a, some arbitrary thing like my object. I'll click add and now it exists in our database. I'm going to need to reload our application so that it gets the proper reference to that when it calls the activation function. Then in my input element, I'll type some arbitrary word like object and click save. And we'll notice that it updates the value of our object in the database. So that works great. I'm not going to click the remove button because then we'd have to recreate the object, but I will click the bind button so we can see exactly what binding a variable to our application does. And when we go back into the input element now and start changing the text, we'll notice that it updates our database in real time without having to process any sort of save function of that object.